Hey, I'm Alice and I love to travel. If you're like me, you're probably daydreaming about your next trip, but you're not really sure where you can travel. So I'm gonna be breaking down some of the best countries for international trips and where you can travel in your home country too. If you love travel, nature, and the outdoors, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications, and say hello in the comment section. With many countries still imposing travel bans or travel restrictions, it goes without saying that local travel and small travel is gonna be the easiest way to travel over the next few months. And there are lots of ways to do it. Now, small hotels are gonna be better than big, and they're also more likely to be open. Also, less popular destinations are far better than popular ones. You can rent an Airbnb in the next town or city and explore areas you probably never would have before. Now, Airbnb actually has a new cleaning requirement and 24-hour windows between parties to reduce the likelihood of the spread of COVID-19. And you're gonna wanna look for the clean certification on these listings. You could also hop in the car or rent an RV and go on a road trip. Now, many of you may be drawn to going to national parks, which are just starting to reopen here in the United States, but so far national parks are having extremely long wait times. Gates are limiting the amount of visitors that are coming in. Some people are waiting upwards of nine or 10 hours just to get into the park. So what I recommend is going to national forests, wilderness areas, and lesser visited outdoor locations if you're deciding to go on a road trip or outdoors for camping, scenic touring, or hiking. For international travelers now, there are going to continue to be many restrictions for American travelers, including 14-day quarantine periods for arrivals, proof of negative COVID-19 testing, and others. But here are the countries that are most likely to allow visitors back in starting in mid-June and July. Slovenia. Now, Slovenia is where the Alps meet the Mediterranean. It's filled with charming towns and beautiful forests. This country is where you can really get into nature. Its capital is the EU green capital. It's both charming and vibrant, and it's a great starting point for any visit to Slovenia. The underground karst caverns are a great place to cool off on a hot summer day, or you can head to Lake Blood for hot springs, medieval castles, and hiking in the Alps. Slovenia actually became the first European country to declare the coronavirus pandemic under control. And on May 14th, the government began easing restrictions for visitors from abroad and lockdown measures for residents nationwide. Currently, there still is a 14-day quarantine for those coming from outside the European Union, which is said to be updated on June 15th. Portugal. Portugal is one of my favorite countries you have the ancient and medieval looking city of Porto in the north with the blue Azalehu tiled buildings. You have the Douro region where they make port and wine. And then in the south, you have the Alentejo, which is full of these magnificent beaches. And you have the city of Lisbon that will remind you of Paris and New York. May 2nd marked the end of Portugal's state of emergency since the country went into lockdown on March 14th and hotels in Portugal are making plans to reopen in July. TAP, the national air carrier, is planning to resume some US flights in June, and Turismo de Portugal, the country's tourism marketing arm, has developed a clean and safe certification to verify that hotels and other tourism businesses are respecting public health and hygiene measures. Foreigners may still face a 14-day quarantine period, but make sure to visit the government websites for up-to-date changes. Antigua. Antigua is in the West Indies of the Caribbean. It's surrounded by coral reefs and well known for its beautiful white sand beaches. Feel free to fall asleep in a beach chair for days on end or hop in the water for scuba diving and snorkeling of some old shipwrecks. Antigua will be allowing flights from the United States to recommence on June 4th with an American Airlines flight from Miami on that date and New York flights expected later in the summer. To be allowed into the country, travelers will need to provide proof of a negative COVID-19 test upon arrival at the airport. Next up is St. Lucia. St. Lucia is well known for the dramatically tapered mountains, the Pittens, which are on the west coast. Now its coast is home to volcanic beaches, reef diving sites, luxury resorts, and fishing villages. Trails in the interior rainforest lead to waterfalls like the 15 meter high Thrai which pours over a cliff into a garden. 
Popular with luxury tours for many years, St. Lucia is where beach vacation meets adventure. St. Lucia will welcome flights from the United States only starting on June 4th. With borders continuing to be closed to international tourists, in order to protect locals and visitors during phase one, the government will require all visitors to present certified proof of a negative COVID-19 test within 48 hours of boarding their flights and undergo temperature checks upon arrival. Travelers will be required to wear face masks and follow social distancing measures during their stay on the island. Around 1,500 hotel rooms are slated to open in early June once a new COVID-19 certification process for sanitization and social distancing is completed. Iceland is the country of fire and ice, with geothermal pools, volcanoes, mountains, ice caves, and a history of trolls. You'll have to ask a local about that. The best way to see the country is to rent a camper van and explore the various landscapes from the comfort of your moving home. You can hike, whale watch, see the Northern Lights, and get some pretty stunning photographs. Now, Iceland plans to begin reopening back to travelers by June 15th, but with a few caveats. Travelers will likely be given three choices upon entry into the country. Number one, you can get tested for COVID-19 upon landing at Keflavik Airport. If the results are negative, you are free to continue on with your travels. Number two, you can go into a two week quarantine. Or number three, you can provide proof that you recently tested negative for COVID-19. Government officials expect to make more definitive announcements about travel restrictions at the end of May. Until there is a vaccine for COVID-19, I don't see international travel getting back to normal and I believe travel restrictions of some kind will remain in place in most places. So wherever you choose to go, local or long distance, make sure you're aware of and following local and regional regulations pertaining to social distancing and the wearing of masks. Thanks so much for watching. I wanna know where you wanna to travel to next, so let me know in the comments below and don't forget to share this video with a friend, hit that little like button, subscribe to this channel, and you can watch some of these other videos for some great travel inspiration.